I'm Tara. I'm Ryan. We love Disney movies. So we decided to watch them all, from Snow White to Frozen 2 and beyond. Each episode, we'll watch a different Walt Disney Animated Studios film and tell you all about it. Did we like it? Does it hold up? Who's our favorite hero? Or villain. We'll give you history and fun facts about each movie. And sometimes, we'll invite our friends to watch along with us. So put on your tiara. Or your evil crown. And join us on our adventure. This is Tara and Ryan's Princess Diaries. All right, hello listeners. We are back with... Uh, Disney's 1963, The Sword and the Stone, and we have a very special guest, the president of our Facebook fan club. Hello, Stephanie. (laughs) Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being here. Um, We're going to start off with some of the easy questions. Uh, Give us a little bit about your uh, Disney background and and why you wanted to do Sword and the Stone. Sword and the Stone, which I've spent, I've had a very, I'm sorry I asked you a question that immediately interrupted mm-hmm. you, but this has been bothering me and we need to talk about it. Does anybody else have like a Baron Stain, Baron Stein bear situation with Sword and the Stone? Yeah. I, I thought it was Sword and the Stone. It's not, it's Sword and... In the stone. Sword in the stone. Yes. <gasps> did you think it was sword and the stone? I just said sword and the stone. Yeah. And that's how it's written in my notes. Yes. How did I not know I that? I don't know. It's so obviously in the stone. <laughs> oh you, my gosh. You, I've always uh, said it's sword and the stone. Yes. You obviously did not watch this movie enough because if you listen to the man who sings the theme song, it's like a long drawn out, the sword in the stone. We'll get there. Don't worry. But I'm looking at it on I am I can't even say I am DB right, mm-hmm. and it's in the stone. But in my notes, I wrote sword it. Sword and the stone. I wrote it. Should and just be the a sword stone. laying next to a stone. Yeah, should be way I, like magical. that's blowing my mind. That I like I can't believe I've done yeah. that. I, I was this years old. I was 35 years old it, when I realized. This. It also could be that there are just so many different Arthurian stories out there that there may literally be one called the sword and the stone. So that may be but where the, we're. But the sword is legitimately in a stone. It's not like <laughs> like. Well, in this one, it's weird because it's like through an anvil and then into a stone, which do they explain the anvil part of it? Because that doesn't make a lot of sense to me other than it looks cool, I guess. Uh, I, I've i only ever seen an anvil in this version um, right. because uh, to answer your question earlier about like why this one from a very young age, I don't know why. I've just been super obsessed with medieval things and the Arthurian legend and... Uh, so obviously I started with the sword in, in the stone and then as other things were getting released, like the musical Camelot, definitely not my favorite musical by any means. In fact, it's like the longest musical ever. And it kind of makes you want to stab your eyes out if you're going to sit through all of it. (laughs) But, you know, great shows were created. Like, uh, I don't know if you ever saw the, uh, television show on BBC, they did a version of Merlin which mm. is With, Merlin, uh, Merlin and Arthur as younger, a younger version of themselves. And then there's Sam Neill from Jurassic Park did Merlin. I think that's mm-hmm. one I've seen that was like a U.S. Yes. Yeah. Series, right? And then if you're watching along with me on Once Upon a Time, we've already surpassed the Camelot uh, <laughs> season. Which was- <laughs> Just as good as actually, actually, I'm getting to the bad part in that show, so it's making all the eh, parts seem pretty great. Yeah, because it's getting pretty bad now. But anyway, what what? So is this like some of your? Is this something you watched a lot as a kid? Is this is this one of your early Disney memories? Is this? Yeah, this one. I mean, it was this one and Robin Hood, just because they were both yeah. super old and medieval. I mean, you guys know we've been to a Renaissance festival together, um, so I don't know. It's just all the medieval, medieval. Uh, in college, I even went so far as to find you know other friends who were just as obsessed with Disney movies as I was, and we would do themed nights. Uh, oh. so like we, w- we watched the sword in the stone one night and as our feast, we got a whole rotisserie chicken and just ate it with our hands. Oh my God. I love <laughs> that. <laughs> so basically so, you had medieval times dinner and tournament. Yeah. The tournament. Yeah. Totally. Only it was like five ninety nine instead of forty nine ninety nine per person or whatever it is now. Yeah. Did you go with us to Matt's 
Was that Matt's birthday where we went to Medieval Times? Mikey's birthday. Ma- it was no. Mikey's birthday, but we sat next to Matt. That's what I remember. Yes. It was for Mikey's deployment before, That's he, what it was. before he yes. deployed. Yes. yes. That's yes. what it was. Yeah, we were all there for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we, and it, was that the one where we were yelling King of the North? No. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. yes we because did. we got, we had one too many. Wizards brew. Yeah, whatever yes. they were called. And if you recall, they were coming around with the photographs just as they were about to do the special announcements yes, for people. Yes, for Mikey. And yes. he missed it, and I was so angry. I was like, you've just <laughs> ruined my medieval experience. So, you know, the medieval love runs deep, but that, they, and they had the uh, ye old flashy spinner toys that they were walking around trying to sell to us. Yes. That's right. Yeah, Every, it's all every, coming back to yes, me now. Yes, and everything was ye old. So, like, you had ye old, ye old plastic mug. Well, so let's let's dive into this movie for just a, for just a second. Then, if you want to go ahead and read the synopsis, sure. So, the synopsis is: a poor boy named Arthur learns the power of love, kindness, knowledge, and bravery with the help of a wizard called Merlin in the path to become one of the most beloved kings in English history. Now. It's been a hot minute since I've seen this movie, but is it kind of a, like, sp- not spoiler, but do they kind of hold back that he's named Arthur? Because isn't he called Wart? They call him Wart. Yeah. Yeah. Throughout the but movie. Do they, but, yeah. but is it like, no, my name's Arthur. Is it like later in the movie where they're like, oh, yeah, it's Arthur. Is it like a reveal of some sort? or? I mean, yeah, they're not, they're not treating him you know they're not treating him at all like he's royalty or supposed to be Mm -hmm. royalty in fact you know they're catering to the uh the older son uh who who is the true son of the the elder um what is yes k is the son and yeah yeah and so i i think in this version um Arthur is sort of like adopted by them. Uh, at one point, he begins to train to be a squire and, and all of those things. Well, would it interest you guys to know that this was this was actually up against when I was doing some research for this, and I think you found the same thing. This one was a little hard to find research for because it hasn't had. This is one of your facts I'm stealing, but it you hasn't are had, yes. At least you gave me credit for it. Yes, Thank you. It, it 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 is one of the few Disney animated movies that doesn't have like a. From uh, the 60s. From the so, 60s, it doesn't yeah. have like, a release. A platinum DVD or a sequel. Um, you know, it doesn't have a lot of the things that a lot of other films have so, had. So it was hard for me to find one of those uh, making ofs. They didn't have one of those. So I was kind of searching around. And one of the things I found a lot about was th- it came down to two movies that were the next ones he wanted to do. And it was between this and a movie that Disney never made called Chanticleer. Do you know anything about Chanticleer? Uh, no, other than there's an acapella singing group called Chanticleer. I'm sure that has nothing to do with it, though. So Chanticleer was about, it was, it was going to be called, uh, there was an early story treatment for it. It was called Chanticleer and the Fog, the, the Farks. I don't know why I'm sounding <laughs> like I'm from St. Louis all of a sudden. Uh, Chanticleer and the Fox, a rooster that believes when he, his crowing actually causes the sun to rise every morning. And it's this big, and it's kind of all I feel these. Like, have you talked about this before? Hold up, <laughs> it may sound familiar, and yeah. I'll explain why. So he thinks it actually it's it's based on like an old French uh, fable or something. And there was another French fable about Reynard the fox, who's a very like crafty fox. Mm-hmm. And Reynard ends up being the bad guy in this, and it's like he's trying to take over the farm they live in, and it's they all kind of they live on a farm, but they're all like dressed in clothes and things like that. And it ends with uh, Chanticleer realizing his cr- his crowing doesn't actually bring the sun sun up, and he has to like fight another rooster. And uh, but he over he like he stops being so vain because of it. I, I don't know. It, it 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 if it sounds somewhat familiar, a uh, animator, a very famous animator from Disney, went off and made his went off and took this idea, and you may remember it as known as. Rockadoodle. Yes, yes, I know why this sounds familiar because Podcast the Ride did a whole thing about it. About Chanticleer, maybe yes. I vaguely okay. remember that. But Don okay. Bluth, who will go into more and more, did some animation around this area, uh, around this time on Disney. He's the one who has done Titan A.E., uh, All Dogs Go to Heaven, uh, Anastasia, um, those kind of things. Potentially ones we'll have many tales about, but we could talk about that later. But Rockadoodle is one of them in which they kind of change it instead of being kind of in like the 18th century on a farm. He's like Elvis, right? Had a real Elvis thing to it. 
So that was the one they wanted to do, and they showed it to Walt, and he was like, yeah, I'm not into it. However, Bill Pete, Bill Pete, our good buddy we talked about on the 101 Dalmatians episode, Mm -hmm. they go, he's got a treatment for something based on, is it Tennyson's The Once and Future King? So it's T.H. White. T.H. White. Who the heck is Tennyson? Tennyson is nobody. Let's cut that out. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, Bill but Pete, it's T.H. White, yeah. the, the Fable Chronicles. So it's there's several of them. Yeah, but yeah. he had a whole thing based on that. And they said, we're going to go with that. So this movie wasn't really liked by the animators because a lot of animators apparently were pushing for the Chanticleer, Chanticleer movie and it didn't happen. And they went with this one instead. That's interesting. So it's, it's kind of a little bit of like a black sheep of the Walt era. Hmm. It's actually the last uh, animated movie Walt was alive for. Yeah, it's the last the one um, he produced because he passed away during the production of Jungle Book mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. 1967. So last animated. We will talk about Mary Poppins in between this and Jungle Book, but that's one we've added to the list. Yeah. Um, also, I don't know if you knew this since you mentioned Bill Pete. Supposedly Walt Disney was the model for Merlin. Yes. And it, they said, Pete said he saw him as argumentative and cantankerous, as well as playful and very intelligent. And so he also gave Merlin Walt's notes. Yes. So that's a, a, a yes. <laughs> now, Steph, did you read the books by T.H. White? I did not. No. Because there's the sword in the stone. I'm now going to make sure I say I it right. Uh, which was published in 1938. And then there's the Once and Future King. Then the other one is The Witch in the Wood. I think, which is later called the Queen of Air and Darkness. Mm. I think so. There were there were a couple sequels um, that came out afterwards. But the other thing that I found interesting is on Rotten Tomatoes, it only got a sixty eight percent. And I remember loving this movie as a child. I was kind of bummed it was so low. And I feel like we're finding like there's not as much information about it out there, and it's not as like hyped up when it comes to coming out with a platinum edition. And I'm kind of curious as to why that is. I don't know if you have any, if you guys have any thoughts on that, but it's interesting to me. I don't know, but I'll tell you, it is also incredibly difficult to find Sword in the Stone merchandise at the parks. Uh, The last time I went, yeah, the last time I went in 2018, we were literally on a mission for three days straight just to try to find uh, anything that was... Archimedes, yeah. the owl. It was impossible. Impossible. They didn't even have a plush. They had nothing. The only thing they said uh, was, I, I think one cast member was like, well, we might come out with a, a pin for Teacher's Week with him on it because, you know, he's the educator. And I was like, okay, can I have one now? But <laughs> My mug has Merlin on it. The That's ink and paint. Oh. I thought it was ink and paint. So show her. Show but this is her. an ink and paint. He's not ink. It's not an ink but and paint. But it's movie. an ink and paint series from he's turned the other way. There he is. But that yeah, okay, but there's a whole bunch of other characters. Yeah. I'll have to post a picture of it, but the package films are on it, Fantasia's on it. It's the ink and paint series uh with Shop Disney. So this is a Tumblr, but then I also got the coolest coffee mug that I'm gonna post a video of. That it's all they're all one color, and when you pour hot liquid into it, they all animate. Mm. So like you can see all the details, which is like my new favorite thing. But that's I've never thought about looking for merch for that. That's really interesting. They don't have anything. It we was may tough. need to we may need to bring something up on the Facebook page or have like a little mini tale about talking about pin trading at the park. So yeah, well, it's just something. anything. It was it was difficult to find anything. Uh, yeah, anything. I mean, and one of my favorite characters of all time is in this movie, and it's it's uh, I basically am her, just not today. I mean, today I kind of look like her, but. Uh, of course, is it Mad Madam I, of Mim, course, can... it's Mad Madam okay. Mim. She's magnificent and marvelous. <laughs> She's I, I love her. She's so good. I can't wait. Well, the other thing that I because I always look up awards. And so I don't know, Ryan, if you looked up stats on how much it made and things like that. Um, so just to say the three top three movies of the year that I have is Cleopatra, uh, How the West Was Won, and It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, hmm. all in the $20 million range. So we're Whoa. starting to see some big, big numbers, numbers now. considering for a while we were just seeing, you know, maybe like $10 million and all that. Uh, also this year, uh, Son of Flubber, a, uh, a Disney sequel, and Dr. No. So now we're in the James Bond era. Whoa. <laughs> uh, how much did this make? Did this I do well? No. Okay. So... <laughs> 
you want to look that up. The other yep. thing I had for the music for the feature songs, this was the first Disney animated feature that had songs by the Sherman Brothers. Yes. So Richard and Robert, and they created some of the studio's best songs over the next decade. So including Mary Poppins, which I'm so, so, so excited about. I'll post. I also watched a feature with them where they were still alive and they were talking about working on this. Well, and... one brother is still alive. Well, I, it was Richard old... is. Yeah, Richard's still alive, but Robert passed in 2012. But some of the movie scores, uh, besides Mary Poppins, that they've done are Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Uh, they did The Jungle Book, but they didn't do Bare Necessities. But they, I think, did everything else. Hmm. Uh, they did Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, The Happiest Millionaire, Charlotte's Web, and The Aristocats are some of theirs. So, And then what a lot of people know them for is... The um, from the theme parks, there's a great big beautiful tomorrow, and then it's a small world. Do you have? I have a couple more. I have like one or two more things, but do you have any notes? And Steph, do you have anything? I I just have sort of like fun facts. Um, oh yeah, that's yeah, like, we'd love I mean, fun facts. Just, uh, I mean, I I always thought it was a weird thing. I, the the thing that one of the things I love the most about the film is that I kind of always felt like it was some shorts that were combined a little mm-hmm. bit because there's the whole squirrel sequence and the fish sequence and the mad yeah. men sequence. And so, uh, you know, when you're a kid and you don't really have a super long attention span, maybe that's another reason why I loved this movie so much, but I always felt like it was kind of like a bonus movie. It felt like three different storylines in one. Um, but one of the things I did notice is I was like, does, does Arthur's voice Changed yes. throughout this film, like isn't he like four different actors or it's something? It's three. It's yeah. three oh, wow. different actors, and you know, I think uh, just reading a little bit about it, they originally cast one actor and then brought in another two, um, and the two were brothers, so they sounded somewhat similar. But the hmm. original actor definitely didn't, and they did it just because. The original actor's voice was changing as he was aging. And so they could have really used this as an opportunity because it is sort of a a coming of age story for him as well. Um, But they didn't. They just sort of inexplicably threw these voices in here. And so you'll hear him with three different voices, even in like the same scene in the movie. And it's really funny because I don't know, it's just like muscle memory with the same thing with music, the way you remember music. I remember the inflection in his voice in certain scenes in the movie. And so I sort of knew that before I read it, but I also just thought it was interesting. Yeah, Um, no, that is really interesting. Yeah. And then another just fun voice thing is that um, the voice of Archimedes is also the original voice of the rabbit in Winnie the Pooh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a couple other uh, uh, familiar voices. Uh, Martha Wentworth, who was the voice, who is the voice of Mim Mm -hmm. and the old lady squirrel. I love the old uh, lady Which is funny because when you think about them sitting there going like, me, 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 burp, burp. Like, don't they just talk like that? Um, that was Nanny in 101 Dalmatians, oh. which I did not realize. Uh, the, also, Archimedes um, was inspired, they said, from the owl from Sleeping Beauty, which I think you can see. Well, and what I read here, so I, I think it is the physical elements of yeah. the owl, because what I read here is a lot of elements from Sleeping Beauty were recycled into this film. Uh, and then when Steph mentioned the squirrels, I just, this was just a weird random squirrel fact that I came across in my knowledge about. Oh, can I do it? Because this is one I wrote down. Is it about the mating and the difference? Yeah, go ahead with it. Um, What was (laughs) it? Since you're that excited. Well, if you don't know it. I gotta find it. I just remember it. I wrote it. uh, uh, Merlin tells Worth that when a girl chooses, girl squirrel chooses her man, it is for life. In reality, yes. however, the male and the female squirrels spend only a couple nights together in the female's nest yep. during mating season, after which the male leaves the nest, forgetting all about his family. It is the female who is then responsible for raising the baby squirrels. So that is a lie. Yes. Merlin is wrong. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe that's but. why it switches to Archimedes teaching him. There you go. <laughs> Maybe so, yeah. Well, are you guys ready to uh, check this one out then? Yeah, I'm really excited to... To watch this one. I have not seen it since I was a kid. Yeah, I'm same. assuming the same for you. Steph, when's the last time you've watched it? As College. soon as you guys told me I was going to be doing the podcast, I had to watch it again. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. great. All right, guys. Yeah. So we're going to uh, pull this one out of the old clamshell and pop it in the VCR. All right. We'll see you on the other side, listeners. We 
We've never had a guest bring us Ooh, back in. Steph, you want to bring, bring us back, us back in? Back in? I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, uh, does your face think, does your face hurt from laughing so much? It's such a good one. This one was it funny. It is a really good one. <laughs> It, I went on a couple weird journeys with it because I think at the beginning I got tired and then when the fish happened, that's when I kind of like re-got interest and then Mim came on and I don't think I remember Mim being that funny. Oh gosh, yeah. she's so good. I don't know if we've officially come back, but it's happening. This is I it. Think We're it back. I think it was a great way to come back and we <laughs> did laugh a lot. It was delightful. See what I mean though? Like it, it, it kind of feels like there's a couple of different storyline so it kind well, of yeah you could like... definitely divide it up too so like if you had a younger kid watching you could just watch the fish storyline right yeah and then go do something and then put mm-hmm. it back on later and and because of that i may have some controversial opinions about this movie but we'll wait till Whoa. the end to get to it okay well we'll start uh, yeah We'll start with the storybook opening. I love a good storybook at the beginning, so it was fun to see that. And then the song comes in that Steph referenced, which basically is telling us the story. Did one of you reference these being lines from the the book? I did. So what is a line from a book? I don't know if the song is, but what's written on the sword is from the book. And so the, it says anvil in there. So that's why they animated an anvil on top of the rock, because the quote is, Whoso pulls out this sword of this stone and anvil is right wise king born of all England. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's why it was animated that way. Can we talk for a minute about the uh, the sword and the stone in the parks? Yes. Because I'm curious if, you know, frequent park goer Stephanie here has seen the sword and the stone. Or ever tried to pull it oh, out. Oh, yeah. I, I Guys, like I said, my last trip in 2018 when I was searching for Archimedes merch... Uh, I can even send you a photo if you wanna, uh, if you wanna post that anywhere. But yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. I try. I yeah, try. We, you don't have to send it to us. You can just post it. Yeah, I mean, I try pulling the sword out of the stone every time because if you ever saw the episode of Full House from like I think it was the, yes, where <laughs> they, they go, go to, to Disney park. and yes. she pulls the sword out and she gets to be a princess for a day. So I have this. Uh, you know, I have this fantasy that one day I'm going to be the one that pulls the sword out of the stone and I'm going to be the princess for the no, day. No, you're going to be the queen. Don't yeah. settle for princess. Yes. Like, <laughs> Well, and don't you know, you've listened to the podcast, The Ride Episode, where they talk about it. Sometimes people can pull it out, right? Or no? No, they do a show and it's like, who yeah, wants to come and pull it out? It and they pull yeah, up they the just, dads. They just call people They get over. the dads up yeah. there and the yeah. dads are like, oh, I can't get it because... Theme parks love to make dads feel dumb. Yeah. I don't know why. It's a weird yeah. theme park thing. And then a kid comes up and it's like, I- I've got videos. We'll post them up there. But they're like, yeah. oh. And I'm like, I just, I I, I-, I-, I want to pull it out. Like, yeah. but-, but like, I'm going to have to like just hang around. And then when they do a, a show, be like, look, kids, it's Elsa or something. And have them all go run over there and be like, all right, it's just me. You and me. Let me pull the sword out. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's do this. It's always a kid. And, you know, I, I always hope that, it, you know, they probably use it for the Make-A-Wish Foundation kids a lot as well. Well, yeah. And, um, well, yeah. I, I also want to go back to that time when it was like every TGIF show had to go to Disney World. <laughs> yes. For like one episode. Step by step. Step by step. Yeah. They went. Uh, Full House went. Did Family Matters? Did they go? Oh. All right, they gotta real quick. And this is for Stephanie. This is for anybody else. Obviously, you know, send us send us an email. Someone Just send, send us, us an email. email. <laughs> um, do is is there a park's presence for Sword in the Stone outside of the the Sword in the Stone? Is Merlin a walk around character? And if if not, why not? Like, yeah. are there is there a a a, a uh, I feel like it gets Wart's the chef. Kitchen, that's a restaurant or something. Or <laughs> do we know of anything else? Nothing. I can't think of anything else. I mean, because they, oh, I mean, they are constantly updating things. I mean, all I can think of is like Gaston's Tavern now, and yeah. But also, you know, I'm. I grew up on the West Coast, so I mm. went. To, we went to Disneyland almost every summer as a kid. I didn't go to Disney World until right, right. I graduated college. So. Mm. Just wondering. It was just yeah. one of those things you talked about. Okay, back to the back to the story. So it basically we start with Merlin in the woods, uh, and he's at the uh, well, and I love how he calls it the Dark Ages because he's so annoyed that there's no plumbing or electricity as he's got to scoop water out of the well. Well, I loved this this interpretation of Merlin because in the stories he can see the future. Mm-hmm. Now they're written, I, I like the original stories are written at a time when they didn't 
estimate the future, but yeah. I like this one of it's a f- it's being written in the future so they can say stuff like, "Oh, this sucks. Where's the electricity?" Yeah. And I liked how they how put out he was to be able to see the future but have to live through the present. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, it just sets him up as being grumpy from like moment one, which I love that he's kind of curmudgeon y. He's mean to Wart. Like, I love it. He's he's such a, like, it's such a good characterization of someone who wants to see him do well, but is so narrow minded. Like, he doesn't have much of a heart. And, like, sometimes Archimedes gets to be the heart, and sometimes Merlin is, mm-hmm. is nice. And it's, it's just interesting. It's more interesting than just, like, I'm a friendly old wizard. Like, it's a very, very deep character. Some of the other characters in this, not so much. Yeah. But I definitely think Merlin was complex and interesting. Yeah. And with that's that's basically when we're in the woods, we're seeing him in his home, and you meet Archimedes then, and they're, Merlin's talking about fate and how in a half an hour mm-hmm. he's going to see this boy he, who's going to go to greatness, But he keeps adjusting the chair. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so then it goes to Wart and Kay hunting, and Kay goes to shoot a deer, and Wart bumps into him as he's about to shoot Mm -hmm. the arrow, and the arrow, like, flies up into the air. So Wart says he'll run into the woods to go get it, and then that's that's kind of what leads him to Merlin's. But as he climbs up the tree to get the arrow, that's also when the wolf yeah, comes we're into play. We're introduced to a wily e. coyote ripple. I love him <laughs> chewing on a bone. Like the sound effects of him like chewing on the bone and every time magic happens or the wolf spits out the bone, it's like a poof. It's like yeah. a, an interesting sound effect. Well, he looks at the bone and then looks at Wart and then like spits it out like this is nothing. Yeah. There's a there's one thing I wanted to jump in with real quick though, when he starts leaving K looks down the barrel and is like, you're going to go in there. Like there's a lot of breaking the fourth wall to talk to Arthur. Mm. Uh, Ector does it a lot when he's like yelling at him. He does a couple, it's the same shot repeated, but I'm wondering if that is something to do with kind of trying to endear you to this character and make, cause, cause this Arthur feels like an everyman. He feels very put upon and everything. I just thought it was interesting to watch out for. And I like that. He said he he didn't think twice about going into the woods, which I think was very brave without him realizing he was brave. He was just like, no, I'll go get it. Yeah. yeah. And so that's how he fall when he falls from the tree when he's climbing up to get the arrow, he falls through the roof into the chair that Merlin keeps like fussing with along the way. And that's our first our first of many appearances of Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa! whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, whoa. we did not track how many, but there are how many if you had to guess? I would say nine. Okay, I, I think we got right eight. up to ten. Yeah. Okay. I'm well, going to go eight. I got to go with oh. lucky number 11 just in case cuz it happened a lot. Ooh, it was like a it, yeah. lot. We're going to have to look it up to see how if many. If uh, uh listeners let us know, but he, it's and it's not just him saying it over again. It's the same it's recording. The same, of, yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, wow. <laughs> so as the one I one of the things I liked is when Wurt's in there and he says, "What a pretty stuffed owl." <laughs> and Archimedes gets so offended. What 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 what? what, what? Uh and then I'm a wizard that's seen centuries into the future. I can see everything. And then I love how Archimedes corrects him and is like, well, no, you can't see everything. The eye, the eye the, you know, when he's talking about centuries into the future, that's the first time we also see the eyes get big. And that's like an ongoing oh, theme. Oh, yeah. 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 Wart's eyes. And I like that it's the wart. I don't yeah. know if you noticed yeah. that, but yeah, everybody calls him the wart, which yeah. I just found interesting too and then the, we there's this whole sequence with the sugar dancing on the table he's trying to have tea uh with wart and the sugar's dancing on the table and it keeps scooping into merlin's cup so there's that there's a lot of like physical sequences that i think are just you have to watch them the personality they give to the inanimate objects being animated is always fun to watch especially speci- specifically yeah. that sugar bowl and it looks a little bit like when um Fauna made the uh, the them cake. all to cake, and, yes. she, and they she and just was going to tell it what to do, and she just showed them the the yeah. recipe, uh-huh. and they were like, "Okay, that's what it looked like." Yeah, to me. and then we also Steph uh, pointed this first one out, and we started tracking it. But when they're having tea, uh, Merlin pours tea into his beard, and then sugar, and we <laughs> tracked all the things that Merlin uh, has in his beard. His beard do you gets, just list them. Yeah, yeah, his beard gets stuck in the door, and I love when it's a big poof, and it almost looks like a dandelion. Yes, mm-hmm. like it covers his whole face uh the fish which is uh wart as the fish goes through his beard uh when he's dealing with the airplane the model in his tower his beard gets stuck in the propeller and Mm -hmm. gets all messed up and then mim at one point (laughs) mims in his beard yeah uh so basically we 
Wurt is meeting Merlin and he's kind of telling him his story and how he's going to be a squire and how he has to get back and he's got like cleaning to do and all this stuff. And so Merlin says that he'll go with him. He just has to pack. And that's the first song. And it's so great. I don't know the official name, but is it Pockety Pockety? I think it's Prestidigitorium. Oh, okay. Because in the Sherman Brothers doc I saw, they were very much like, because they had to kind of figure out some of his magical magical words. And they were talking about how like, they didn't want him to just say stuff like abracadabra and usual mm-hmm. stuff. And they wanted him to have this kind of old feeling, but they didn't want to be like like this old wizard. He also had to feel kind of new. And they wanted him to kind of sound like made up words that sound very Latin. And they thought that it, it, it's an interesting thing of why they chose those words. Yeah. Uh, and so he starts with the books and basically everything gets smaller so it can go into the bag. And I love how Steph mentioned it's kind of like a precursor to Mary Poppins mm-hmm. because like everything that just she can pull right, anything yeah. out of the bag, which is cool. Uh, and then I love how it speeds up. So when he's like speeding up, like the song and the tempo speeds up and everything starts packing more and more. And then Archimedes also almost gets packed in there. His his little house, I think, goes in there. So I I kept thinking of this, and this is a quick aside, and we can cut this out if it's nothing. But when uh, my, my friend Blake and I went to uh, Ireland, there was a night where we were in a pub with a bunch of Irish guys. And there was this one dude, and then they were really like, you know... Getting, getting to know us and, and, and this one guy, they were he kept making fun of me. And then his friends would, don't let him make fun of you. He looks just like an owl. And as soon as he said that, like he goes, he, he leans back and he had big eyes. He goes, what, 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 what? And, and it looked exactly like what Archimedes does in the movie. And I thought of it every time. Because he, he doesn't go, who, who. But he, he does goes, what, some, what, 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 Yeah, he what? does what, I think he does who. A couple Maybe. times, but not as much as this other yes. one. Yes. Yeah. And I, I, I. After seeing this, I wonder, is that a bit he does fr- that this guy we met in Ireland, like, yeah. from Sword in the Stone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then, so yeah, so he packs up. That's when his beer gets stuck in the door on the way mm-hmm. out. And then uh, they're basically heading to Ward's castle and that wolf is following them. And this is a whole nother sequence where um, they're going through the forest. And I love that it looks like Merlin is skiing down the hill, like the way that they've <laughs> animated him. And that's what he does when he lands at the end. Too. Yeah. And he skips over the water. And I love that he lifts up his robe and he's got bright pink boxers on. Yes. Uh, so that whole bit is good. And the he's same- kind of got that Cruella de Vil thing where his clothes make him seem bigger than he is. Yeah. Because every time he does like like big arms to, to do a spell, his, his cloak immediately like goes down to his yeah, arm. Yeah, and his, his arm shoulders. is so yeah. scrawny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they get to the top of this like hill and the wolf is like panting behind them trying to mm-hmm. catch them. And then he asks where Wart's castle is and Wart is basically like, oh, it's north. It's the completely other direction yeah. than it, that where we've really, been going. It really sets up the dynamic between them two, the two where Arthur or Wart is just like interested in everything he's saying and Merlin's like... He's very so, captivated by him. Yes, and Merlin's yeah. like, I know what I'm doing that he, and he's absent minded, so he forgets to ask which way should be going. So they've been going for however many, you know, yeah, a mile or whatever. So then it cuts to um, Kay, and what's the dad's name? Hector. Hector. Uh, and when Wart gets back to the castle, he gives him demerits, and so it equals like four demerits is four hours of yes. kitchen duty. Hector's got a very big uh, King Hubert from Sleeping, Sleeping Beauty, Beauty, the Beauty friends, yeah, yeah. The, the friend of the king, yeah. Um, and he introduces them to the owl, and I think it is it Merlin who says he's a highly educated owl, and yes. then they all start like rolling, laughing about like how absurd. Well, because the owl and Merlin are. Yeah, I think they think Merlin's just a. They keep calling him magician. Yeah, Merlin's like I'm a wizard. And so uh, Merlin says how he's the most powerful wizard, and he shows him wind and snow, and calls it a wizard blizzard, and it's inside in the middle of <laughs> July, and so uh, he's basically like. I'm going to educate Wart and, you know, wants to stay there with them. And he disappears and he pops back. So he's doing like different magic to basically force Hector into letting him stay at the castle. Right. I, yeah. I think this movie has a very interesting um, relationship with magic because like it's a movie about a wizard, but it's not 
he's not casting spells like crazy. It's just usually like they do something and they examine it. And they're also doing it kind of out of the eye of Ector and Kay. Like the world doesn't seem to understand magic like Arthur's seen it. Do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, well, and, and... But Ector's also not like, witchcraft, burn him. He's like, eh, it's, you're probably some trick. And then he's like, oh, you're pretty good. You could make a blizzard. Like, you know, it's interesting. Yeah. And he, I also like the bit that he keeps calling him Marvin instead of yes. Merlin. And so he's like, fine, you can stay. You can stay in our guest tower. And it is this tower that looks like a, a breeze would, yeah, a breeze would just knock it over. And so you cut to this terrible rainstorm. And I love how we see the heavy rain. And then you just hear these pops of umbrellas going <laughs> Uh, into the hole, which that has to be magic because umbrellas couldn't have existed back then. Uh, yeah, right? that's something I love, you saw but, in the future yeah, and, and then like created. recreated. Um, but he pops the umbrellas all in the tower. And I like that, that they call out different things that Merlin has or does because he shows him the train mm-hmm. uh, when they're drinking tea, like all of his little models of him recreating the things he's yes. seen. And they all look very cool. Da Vinci-esque. Yeah. So it's yeah. that kind of like, you know, like it's he's got the Da Vinci... Pl- not plain but like glider model and stuff like that i don't know i it merlin not to play my hand early was like by far the most fascinating character archimedes is a very close second but yeah. i think merlin they just did such a good job of making him an interesting version of merlin we haven't seen before and something that works for the 1960s yeah so then um what's his name i don't know this guy's name with the crazy mustache pelinor. Sir, sir pelinor Thank yes. you. Yes. So Pelinor. I, these are all real characters, I believe, from the legends. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, they, they all sound very familiar. I know Hector and Kay were. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know why Kay has always stuck in my head and been like someone to remember. And I talked about this. You guys were like, by the end of the movie, like, I hate Kay. And Kay I'm like, has go away heat for me. I don't know why I like him. I think it's his design. Like, I like his big chin. Yeah. You know who he eyes. reminds me of a little bit um, from the package films? He reminds me Sleepy Hollow. Brom, yeah, oh. yeah, a little bit, it, not it, identical, but well, so that means he's in the Gaston family. Yes. So now yeah. you understand why mm-hmm. I like him. I like yeah. big brutes. Yeah, Palinor comes in to big news from London in this in this rainstorm, and Merlin asks Archimedes, and I like this little fight between them where he's basically like, "You couldn't get more wet. Like you're drenched <laughs> right now. Like just go down there and find out." So. um he tells him about the big tournament on New Year's Day, and the winner of the tournament will get the crown of the king of and be the king of all of England. Mm-hmm. And so they want Kay to do it. And uh, they promise Wart if he sticks to his duties, he can be Kay's squire. And every time they're promising Wart something, he's always got this giant pile of dishes, and he always falls down the steps the same into the way. kitchen the same way. Mm-hmm. Whoa, whoa, wow! Yeah, that, yeah, that's another one of those. <laughs> Uh, so then it cuts to training with Kay and, uh, he slams into Merlin's tower. It's like the next morning. So you, when well, they Merlin's got this little, like, up, they've got this device they've created. That's like, that's the, uh, supposed the to be other the other night, jouster, yeah, when which, it, which looks like you're like, okay, you can take that thing down easily. And of course, Kay hits it and does, does like a springboard off into the thing and into the knocks, tower. Yeah. yeah. And so the tower's moving and that's kind of what wakes Merlin up. And he's a little bit foggy. Like he can't really remember where he is and he doesn't what really century? recall the boy and my mind went to is it because he's always back and forth from one time to another mm, is it yeah. like he never really knows oh, that's got to be it yeah, yeah I, so. I just thought that that was that was kind of a fun way to do that yeah um because that's really the only time we see him kind of foggy like that like to where he's not really sure what's going on uh so then it cuts back and then they're walking by the moat and I really like the scene of Merlin and Wirt walking by the moat because for a while we're following them in the reflection of the water. So we're not seeing them oh, walking yeah, that, as much as we're seeing yeah. them walking in the water, and, which and, I thought was cool. Well, it was interesting how they did it because it almost felt like if you've seen those those things about how the Ink and Paint Club did the inking and the painting where they'd flip them over and draw everything. It, they didn't have any hard lines. It was just the colors. Yeah. So... I, I have a question I want to bring up to the group okay. um, before we go further about this, the fish and the squirrel and the bird scene. What do we feel Merlin taught Arthur in, in ready to prepare for his being a king? Oh, okay. So with each sequence. So we yes. can, do you want to talk about the sequence and then talk about what we think he taught him to kind of like refresh? Or in, do you want to go in through In general, do you think, before we go to that, in general, do you think he taught him what he needed to know to rule England? In those three lessons of being a fish, a squirrel, and a bird. 
I mean, I don't know <laughs> about all of that, but I think, you know, it says something that when he was watching Arthur set up the horse and everything for Kay's training, he yeah. just said, look at the lad. He puts his heart into everything that he does. And I think that that's something that can't some, you know, that can't really be taught. I, I, yeah, I thought that that's was something a- like his passion and his energy is. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. Well, I think that was talking about his potential. And then he took that potential and he taught him how to fight a barracuda. <laughs> well, I think it's, no, with the fish, the one thing he taught him how to do is he, the barracuda, he was like, you have to be smart. You have to use your brain. Mm-hmm. So he swam through the chain and that's how he trapped the barracuda. Okay. Eventually Wait, the barracuda We'll talk about the out. other stuff. So, yeah. How the hell did you guys know that was a barracuda? And also, I didn't. Can you I insert, didn't. can you insert part of the song barracuda? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, um, I didn't know it was a barracuda. Might, I just said it because Ryan said it. You know it. what? I don't think it can be a barracuda because I think barracudas are What did I call it in my notes? Water. Let me find but it. But it's got, barracudas have that long, It's like I don't know. It's like an underbite eel fish thing that yeah, I predates, sea, predates the eels from the Little Mermaid. Yes, I said a sea deep water creature So I because I didn't know what to call it. I mean, it. I also fish, so I know yeah, a thing. It's I mean, a little like an alligator gar or something like that, but yeah. I don't really have those in England. But yeah, so uh, he's turned into a fish. We'll just jump right into yeah, it. Yeah, sorry, sorry. No, I mean, that's essentially what's next. And the whole beginning is, is um, you know, you don't have the instinct to swim like a fish, so yes. you have to be taught how to swim. And so you have to use your brain. I like how he uses the example, use your brain like a helicopter. And then he's like, oh, wait, <laughs> you don't know what that is. Uh, and then that's when the left-right song comes in. And I like this song because it also shows, back to Steph saying he has potential, when he goes to eat the bug, that's instinct. Yeah. Like, he didn't. Okay. He was grossed out that he ate the bug. He's like, Merlin, I ate a bug. And Merlin was like, that's instinct. And they have like that little back and forth about how he does have instinct there. And then we learn that Merlin has a tickling fetish. Oh my gosh, yes. (laughs) They both laugh as they swim through the tall grass. And he goes, let's go back and swim through that tall grass. It tickled. (laughs) I also like the frog in this scene, the bullfrog that's following them. The little bully, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so then that's when they bump into this barracuda, this big fish, this like creature. And he basically tells, uh, where he's on his own. He's basically like, you're on your own, like sink well, or he gets swim caught. kind of a thing. He doesn't yeah. just say it. He gets caught in that knight's helmet. That's right. And then and he then goes, and then he goes, it, yeah. well, this is a good time for you to, you know. But this is where he says, use your head and outsmart the big brute. So at first he does it while he swims through the chain and the, fish's mouth gets caught in it and then he does the same thing with the arrow he finds the arrow and puts it in the fish's mouth so it like pries his mouth open so i think he's teaching him to use his brain in this one right like doesn't teaching he him is in this sequence doesn't he even say brain over brawn i yeah i think yeah he does say that yeah so he's like so i think for the first one to your question ryan that he's trying to make him like you have to think on your toes you have to like be ready for anything but like make a smart decision while you're under pressure, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a gar. It's not a barracuda. What is a gar? So, we well, saw? we have alligator gar here, but apparently they are in, in Europe. It's a long-snouted uh, European fish. I'll find a picture real quick and show it to you guys. Perfect. <laughs> but, we, but we have them there. Like, it's when people go bow hunting, they usually, I think they do alligator gar because they float close to the surface. Oh. Hmm. Um, this looks, kind of, here's, yeah. So there's there's one. Oh, interesting. Oh. Oh. It almost looks like oh yeah, okay. From far away it looked like a swordfish cuz it was I mean, so, the mouth is yeah, real Yeah, some thin, of them are very but... long. I think that's what they were going for. Yeah. I but, don't know why I'm obsessed with this this but that's okay. here we go. <laughs> but in the but in the end Archimedes wakes up from his little nap on the tree and saves. This is the first time we see him caring for a wart. I keep calling him Wart, but Arthur, mm-hmm. however we want to refer to him. But this is the first time we really see him care for him. And the minute Merlin points out that Archimedes cares, Archimedes gets all I was Young Perch is I my favorite food. I was him. Yeah, <laughs> I love that whole bit. And he's, I love how he's wet through most of his movie. He's just so put off. I love yeah. him. They're both cranky old men, and uh-huh. it's great. Yeah. And then, so then it's cutting back to training and... At the castle, and Wirt is trying to tell them what happened. Mm-hmm. Like he's trying to describe his day as a fish, and he winds up getting six more demerits in the kitchen for like telling this fish story, this larger than life story, and 
and whatnot. And so now he's cleaning and singing in the kitchen and Merlin shows up to ask if he's ever wanted to be a squirrel. And then that's when I said, how many people live in this castle? Because that kitchen is wall to wall dishes. There are so many dishes. But then you pointed out how much Ryan points out how much Kay eats. In 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 the scene, the first scene with Kay, he has like three full turkey legs and just throws the Yeah, but there's so many dishes in that kitchen. And so that's when Merlin starts his magic to cleaning the dishes. And then I loved your comment. It's like he's never seen Fantasia before. Yeah. Yeah. He he doesn't know it's going to go bad. He doesn't know this is going to go bad at some point. the, The other character that was bottled off Walt, Yes. Yesnid. The, oh yes, Yesnid Disney. Backwards. The Disney. Yeah. The, the, that's the name of the, the sorcerer. I don't know why I'm telling Stephanie this. She's of course listened to the Fantasia. Mm-hmm. So. Obviously, did anyone Clearly. else just get a really good chuckle when he came up behind Wart, like Wart's inside of a pot scrubbing it, and yeah. and he's just like, "Have you ever thought about being a squirrel?" Was, and, yes. No. What? No. no <laughs> why nobody. would I? No one thought of that. Uh, and, and then it cuts to them being squirrels and he's trying to explain gravity to Wart and about how like you, you shouldn't just like, you have to look before you leap essentially. And so there's like that whole bit there. And then he meets the girl squirrel who is so sweet. And this story is heartbreaking <laughs> at the end. Now I, we're going to, I'm going to admit something here, which might be weird. I think I had a cartoon crush on the Into girl. Into the girl squirrel. squirrel. I can see it. She has up. like doughy eyes. Well, yeah. well, part of it I realized this time. So let's talk a little bit about that because we've talked about sexualizing animal female characters. Yeah. And I think both of these lady squirrels do a good job of not being like va 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 voom. Yeah, but and they're not wearing like, lipstick or anything yes, like, that. like that. Like they look like a, a woodland creature. But they don't even have like huge eyelashes yes. or are like super shapely or anything. I think her eyes are a little more doughier than the other one that goes after Merlin. But other than that. So yeah. So for some reason growing up, I think I had a crush. I don't want to say I'm like a furry or anything like that because I that's <laughs> oh not my, my thing. But I, for some reason, I think Disney anthropomorphized women animals. for Like Gadget from Chippendale. I had yeah. a little weird cartoon yeah. crush on her. But um. I also think part of it is I just love how she's how how she reacts to being into him. Yes. Like she like shoves him and like is just nuzzling on him and stuff like that. It's the kind of uh, um, affection I hope to get sometimes from my wife. Not always the case or even my dog. Usually not the case as well. So it's just something I'm searching for in my life and have yet to uh, find. Okay, so. note it. Uh, so <laughs> you're gonna get a box of plush stuffed squirrels on your doorstep real soon. <laughs> <laughs> um. So this is when Merlin goes into that squirrels mate for life, and Merlin totally like calls. Wart out like Wart is hiding under Merlin's tail at one point because Merlin's also a squirrel and the lady squirrel's looking for him and he like points under his tail to be like he's under here. So there's this whole like back and forth physical scene between the two of them and um, then we see the wolf is back and the wolf is like waiting with his mouth open hoping that Wart is going to fall from the tree Uh, and when he falls... Uh, he falls on Archimedes first, and then the other bird, which reminded you from Alice in Wonderland, the serpent. Serpent, yes. serpent. <laughs> like. uh, and or, then, the, or a mad version of the uh, Akon, not Aconcagua, uh, the, the, the the bird from the package. The, would films. you call it the weirdo bird? The weirdo bird, yeah. Uh, but then we go back to Archimedes, who's or not Archimedes, Merlin, who's like twirling. I love that he's like twirling the acorn like it's a basketball. Well, it's it's funny because he's he's you know you said this he uh, gives away Arthur's location and he's like yeah go get it. he's like he's like totally it, oblivious in the sense that it could happen to him. He's well, like, not even oblivious. Yes, but he's also like egging it on and then it starts happening to him and all of a sudden it's not so funny anymore. Yeah. I think yeah. I like that. So then we find the girl squirrel that falls for Merlin and we bo- we all love that madam please <laughs> madam <laughs> as she's madam like, yes. and then she tickles him and for a moment he seems he laughs, it because he and, loves yes, being tickled. And then he's like no 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 no. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time all of that's happening the girl squirrel winds up saving Wart from the wolf. And she, like, bites the wolf's ankle and is, like, trying to distract yes. the wolf away. And She's a hero. She's protecting yeah, Arthur. Yeah, she's very protective. And um, I hope that in the sequel, 
they turn the squirrel into a lady and then it could be this whole thing about him like like ariel kind of where he's teaching her about the the, the human world <laughs> oh my and they God. can be together she's guinevere that's the squirrel is guinevere, is guinevere? <laughs> so uh merlin changes back first he's trying to explain to the girl squirrel like i'm just a grumpy old man like i'm gr- i'm a grouchy old man and he changes back and she is not happy yeah. she's more angry well, she than screams sad like yeah a human. she screams cuz she's shocked when he Wah! turns back and then <laughs> Then he changes Wart back and this girl squirrel is so sad and you watch her go into the tree and this giant tear runs down her face. So sad. But I think that that is the lesson there because they talk about how love is stronger than gravity. I think the lesson is like love can be very powerful. Well, right? Like Well, if you know anything about the stories, you know Arthur's one big problem is his love problems because yeah. so Lance a lot. So I do think I do think there are lessons in each one of these. Mm-hmm. So we're back at the castle training and there's all this commotion in the kitchen. And who is, did they say the name of the woman who okay. comes out? I think, because I feel like in another thing, she's a voice we've heard somewhere before. And another thing, she's like the scullery maid or something like that. Like, and when I heard that, I'm like, oh great. We don't have any female characters in this movie. But like, I, I, I couldn't find her on okay. IMDb. I'll double check a little later. But, but she, yeah, she comes out and she calls in... Sorry, she looks like, and we'll get to this later when in Robin Hood, when Little John dresses up as the yes. Gypsy, yes. as the, yes. as the uh, yes. uh, Romani woman, uh-huh. yeah. or traveler. I don't know what the correct word is. I'll yeah. get, guys, I'll figure that out before we get there. Uh, but I love that um, the dad. He's like Gadzooks, black magic. When he comes in and sees like all the dishes and everything washing themselves, there are amazing exclamations in this. There's yes. Jehoshaphat. Yes, uh, Merlin says that a couple times. Archimedes has a few. I can't remember. Which written yeah. down but yeah uh and so then this whole like physical scene happens with the comedy of them trying to fight the dishes and they're both him and Kay are getting washed uh by brushes and things and then merlin comes in and basically stops it all and so wart uh starts to stick up for merlin here because yes. they're kind of getting on merlin and i think does merlin disappear again when this happens Yes, and because they, they go, they go like, let's kick him out, and he's like, he could still be around. Yeah, so he disappears, <laughs> and then this is when Wart sticks up for Merlin, and he gets like really upset and like really like tears in his eyes, and um, then they say, well, you can no longer be Kay's squire, like you've been demoted essentially, and then Merlin comes back when warts all alone to apologize to oh, him, and, which i thought was a nice scene and i like how he reappears with just his beard and his glasses and his head yes yeah. but i thought it was nice of him to because he doesn't think there's any honor in being a squire he's made that clear but yes. i do like that he apologizes because he recognizes that it's important to wart so then um they go back to the tower so they're in the tower and he wants to get all the medieval ideas out of wart's head and there's the map of the flat flat earth and then He's talking about how the earth is round. There's yeah. like a map and then he takes that away and then There's shows globe the globe. Where it says, uh, new world to be discovered in right. 1492. Yes. Yeah. And so Archimedes then gets huffy here because he's like, you can't teach history from the future. Like you yeah. can't teach it forwards to backwards. It's got to be the yeah. other way around in reverse. Side note and- though, did you notice that when they were singing the song in the water as they were fish and they were singing that's what makes the world go round? Oh. It wasn't even questioned when they were in the water. It was well, just like That's because Ugh. if you guys were up to date on flat earth theory, you know that the earth does move but the disc goes around like that. Oh. See, see there's mountains oh. on the outside Got that's it. what keeps the water from overflowing. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, okay. Apologies to our flat out <laughs> flat earth listeners out there. <laughs> Go find another podcast. <laughs> this isn't the one for you. Uh, wait. Uh, also, other side note, I still lo- I don't think we pointed it out, but I love how they just kept uh, Merlin's accessory with him at all times. As a fish, he had yes. his glasses. As a squirrel, he had his yeah. glasses. And we'll get to the wizard's duel, but he had glasses for every single yes. character every that he was. Every single character, and yeah. amazing eyebrows. Yes. yes. Oh, the eyebrows were always there, too, somewhat. Yeah. Um, and so Merlin gets huffy at this point and basically tells Archimedes, well, then fine. He's your pupil now. You can teach him. I, I love Merlin as a whiny baby, like 
putting it, crossing his arms and sitting down and puffing his pipe. Yeah, and like really getting angry about it. And so Archimedes tells him to read this mountain of books. And that's when he finds out that Wart can neither read nor write. And he's like, well, we have to start at the beginning. And he teaches him how to write. And then both of you were wondering who wrote all those chalk letters up on the board yeah, that he's got to recreate. There's yeah. every letter in cursive and then he's recreating them. And I'm like, did Archimedes write those? Yeah. Right. Uh, and so this is when Merlin starts fiddling with the airplane. He's asking them for the, where's the flying machine? And he finds it. And that's another part where his beard gets all tied up. And the laugh that Archimedes has here, because he does not believe that humans are going to fly. And he's like, if humans were made to fly, they would be given wings. Mm -hmm. And he like demonstrates his wings. And I just love the laugh. The laugh goes on forever with Archimedes. Like he's really, um, like pleased with himself and so then they're looking out the window and wart starts saying about his dream how he's always wished he could fly and wants to fly and so he turns him into a bird and he starts to take over teaching merlin starts to take over teaching him again and trying to explain feathers and archimedes is like shouldn't the one with the feathers be teaching him (laughs) how to fly i just happen to be a bird yeah And so uh, he talks about it being a delicate art. And so they start with a glide and he's Archimedes is so excited at what a natural yeah, or is with flying. I love that you get these like when when he starts when Arthur is dreaming about being a bird and and Merlin gets excited to kind of like quietly change him into a bird. and He doesn't notice at first. And I like when Archimedes is you're a net. You're really good at it. Like I love that they're kind to him. They're, they're not supportive these just to complete him. Yeah. grouches. Uh, and so they fl- then they see the hawk, and the hawk is kind of what um, leads them to Madame Mim because the hawk tries to come after Wart, and he flies into the woods, and Archimedes follows him, and he falls through the chimney, and the roof of Mim's house looks like a witch's hat. <laughs> oh, yeah, mm-hmm. like not even... Oh, like, it's very I read clear. that in a, in a I read in it a in a note, and too. I went, oh, yeah. well, let's see how much... Oh, no, it looks exactly like yes. it. Yes. Um, and, and guys, I, I just want to say, I remembered this scene, and I was like, oh, this is my favorite scene from it. This holds up. This not it's only so holds good. up, this scene was better than I remembered yeah. it. Her whole thing, I was like, this is... I was laughing. She's great. It was so good. We noticed that she's playing solitaire when he comes to the scene. <laughs> yeah. She's, like, playing cards. <laughs> And she introduces herself as the marvelous Madame Mim. And then her song about what she can do. She can change from big to small, from ugly to beautiful. And when she's beautiful, the way she pulls her hair to change her face back is really funny. (laughs) Yes. It looks like a a Christmas cracker. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, She she gets upset and she starts changing all these things because Wart says, I'm with Merlin, the greatest... And Merlin's Sword. magic is useful. Yeah, and she's like, well, let me show you something, Yeah, pal. and then she says, well, now I'll have to destroy you. So it does get dark for a second yes. when she says that. She turns, yes. like, kind of quickly, because she's mad. But she mad. does it with her attitude. Like, she's like, I'm yeah. so sorry I have to destroy you now, but we'll make it again. Yeah, and not mad, like, angry, like, she's batty. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. And when you get the, when she turns into the, the beautiful woman with long purple hair when she when you get the close-up on her face that that just looks like some of the animation of the woman in, uh in the rescuers oh, oh Madame yeah Medusa. yeah i mean that's oh, yeah, that's I always like that. what i thought anyway but it, i just just the no, way her, her teeth and her eyes and everything well, are i was like oh i'll, I'll say similar. when uh when when with you know the, the our call went out for a little while tara and i were talking because i was saying I wanted to cosplay as Merlin when he returns from Bermuda. Yeah. And she goes, well, I want to do Mad Madam Mim, but I'll be like the sick version. But I'm like, well, why don't you be the hot version? And she was like, well, who wants to be the hot version? I'm like, well, I, the thing I liked about it was she wasn't like, like she still looked a little like angular and odd. Like she looked cartoony and strange. And I think like, it's more fun to cosplay as her with the pig right. nose or to cosplay as her yeah. when she's got all the spots. Fair. But... Gr- Awesome. Always great for me to see how gross you can get for a costume. Um, but uh, I, I, what I'm saying is they didn't make her look like Aurora or even like as good as like yeah. beautiful as, as Maleficent or something like that. She still looked kind of like. They did like, give they did give her a really awkwardly huge rack, though, if you go back yeah, and look and at it. Yeah, and a very, very tiny waist. Her waist is so it's more tiny. It's the waist because I doesn't Mad Madam Mim kind of. Or am I thinking the scullery maid had a gigantic. Uh, uh, bust. 
Oh. Like like un like cartoonishly like this is... I get I would describe Mim as round. Like yes. her face mm-hmm. and her body, she's very rounded. They tend to give their round characters though, a little bit of a cinch in the hip and I thought Yeah, I, I when she was no, when she was the beautiful one, she had the tiniest of waists. Let's, but... mm-hmm. let's talk more about Mad Madam Mims. Hey, just... I lo- look, hey, I love I, every part of her. her. You know, they just, they really gave her an exaggerated rack and a teeny tiny waist. They do. So. Um, but it's not there for very long. And I, I love that she shake when she shakes her butt along to the music when she's yeah. the beautiful one and like she that like rhythm of it. She like girl on the front of the car. Yeah, a little yeah, bit, yeah. yeah. So then she turns into a cat after she says, I'll destroy you because he's still a bird at this point. And um, she says how much she loves games. And Archimedes, we see during all of this, he realizes he's run into Mim and he goes to get Merlin. So then Merlin shows up and he blows in and she suggests having a wizard duel and she slaps him back and forth a couple times, which I really liked I want to see a prequel where it's like, why do they know each other? Yes, obviously like, they've yeah. learned magic together yeah. at some point. Yeah, well, they both I'd live love... in the same woods. So. Yeah, I would love to know like the backstory between them. Yes. Um, so they do a battle of wits and the rules are only animals and she says... For only animals, um, I don't know if she has like another caveat, but for no fake thing, she says no pink dragons. No pink dragons. Then no disappearing. No disappearing. And then Merlin says no cheating. Yes. And the minute they do the count off to count she down, she disappears. And so the first. One, I've, two, 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 three, and two, four. <laughs> I remember that very specifically. Yeah. That and that's a little Cheshire cat a little bit that she's like silly is, yeah. counting and then disappearing like that. But here are all the things that they turn into. So Merlin turns into a turtle and she's a gator. And so sometimes they overlap the animals, but I'm just kind of going to list them. Yeah. Then he's a rabbit and she's a fox. Then it's the caterpillar and the hen, which is a good one. Then the walrus, because the walrus <laughs> falls on the favorite. hen. Yeah. And then she turns into the elephant up from underneath the walrus. Then he's the mouse and she's the tiger. I love her animated as the tiger because she's walking upright. Well, she, but like with her, yeah. like she's having a hard time. Like she doesn't look like a sleek tiger. Yes. She's like a tubby tiger. Yeah. And then he's still the mouse. And then she turns into the rattlesnake mm-hmm. at that point. And then I like when he's the crab too. Yes. I like him as the crab. And then shout out she... to Marilyn blue crab. Yes. <laughs> and then as he's got, I guess it's, is it around the rattle of the snake that it then becomes the rhino horn? I think the, the snake keeps popping out of the hole and he's trying to pinch it. And then a horn and comes then a out. horn comes yeah. up and he pinches it and it, we find out she's a rhino. And then he's the goat and that's when she turns into the dragon but it's purple so that's Did I like say no yeah purple dragons? so that's kind of how she gets away how she thinks she gets away with that and so he like rams her as the goat because she's stuck in a tree and she falls into the water that's right there and he goes back into a mouse now when and she's still a dragon when he's the mouse when she turns into this dragon uh doofus the dragon how do how Drufus the dragon. How Doofus the dragon lost his head is a book by Bill Peet, the guy who. And I think wrote you've this. mentioned the book and, before. And I'll show. I'll put up some pictures of him. But looked very not the head. The head looked different, but everything else looked. When you see it, you're gonna go, "Oh, I can see this Bill mm-hmm. Peet thing." The other thing about we talked about it is you read somewhere that it was like it looks like Maleficent, which I don't think she does. I don't know that it looks like it. That I think I read it was influenced, right? It's another dragon. I think the fire. I think the part the scene, when she's attacking him and the yeah. music changes there too. And the fire really looked like that. It looked like that Prince Philip scene, except yeah. she's chasing a rabbit with a. Mustache, and she's a little bit so. more of a dopier dragon. She's yes. not as a fierce dragon. But then Merlin, with his wits, since that's what it is. Is so smart, and he tur- she thinks he disappears, but he turned into a germ. He turned into a rare disease. What did he, what'd he turn into, Stephanie? He turned into the Rona. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I mean, some of the same symptoms, not the, the spots. Spots is a new one. Uh, but hot and cold flashes and violent sneezing. And so then we cut to her in bed, and he's got the thermometer and basically is like, you'll be fine in a couple yeah. weeks. And so then it cuts to... Um, you oh you almost forgot a, one of my favorite parts and that's oh, why I, I call I call myself Mad Madam Mim is he takes his cane again and makes another hole in the roof and says you need oh, lots yes. and lots of sunshine and she says I hate sunshine <laughs> I hate it and that's you know there are days when I that's me so do you do you <laughs> cover your face with your hair 
Yes. Right now I do because it's 800 million feet it's long. It's so I long have, and so thick, I right? Was supposed I feel like to, you have really thick hair. It, yeah, I was supposed to cut it all off and donate it in March, but obviously that didn't happen. So now it's going to not be, it's going to be like more than eight inches of hair once I am ready Whoa. to donate it. It's yeah. going to be a lot. Um, but I wanted to insert another fun fact about the wizard's duel. That is probably the most fun. Like, I've seen that scene the most out of everything because that specific scene was featured in a Disney Halloween special. I don't know if either of you have ever seen it, but it's from the 80s called Disney's Halloween Treat. And they took they took snippets of all these different movies. So the scene from Snow White where she's creating the poison for the apple. Mm, um, It's sounding very familiar. The uh, the scene from Fantasia. um, uh, What is it? Night on Bald Mountain and uh, this wizard's duel scene. And it's 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 a really fun sort of creepy Halloween special because they actually have a, a like a guy in full makeup who's like the man in the mirror but i but i will um i'm gonna find this video for you guys on youtube um, it's great it's it's it, the wizard stool is one it's probably the most well-known scene from the movie just I, because well, of that i yeah. kind of want to watch it again after we oh yeah it's this. so like, good. i will just watch that scene it's, it's really so great. It's, yeah. it's really well designed you get a cool new look that like you were talking about having you know we've built up that the animals look like the people they turn into and mm-hmm. then this is the culmination of that and i think yeah. It looks, yeah it's a great scene yeah no it is really good i also wrote here i love when they leave mim's house how Wart is still the bird And they're both on his hat. And I love how Archimedes is always on his hat when they're traveling. (laughs) I just love that, that like little touch that they're always on the top of his wizard hat. But then it cuts to the castle at Christmas and snow is falling. And we find out that Kay is now Sir Kay. And he's been knighted. And we find out that his squire got sick. So do we think Merlin gave him the same? <laughs> because don't they say he's got spots or something? They no. Come no, he said he's got the bumps. He's blown the up mom, like mom, a toast. That's what he's yeah. got. Okay, but my first thought was, did Merlin make him sick? <laughs> but Merlin, I guess, doesn't want him to become a squire. So I guess he did. Yeah. probably wouldn't have done that. Well, because, yeah, because he goes and he with his squire outfit to Merlin. Yeah. And Merlin's like ticked about it yeah he's so excited to show merlin that he's going to be a uh, k squire after all and merlin gets very huffy and like turns his back to him and Wart starts tearing up here again because this is this has kind of been his yeah. dream he's like i'm nobody like this is a really good thing for me it really makes uh, every time he cried really made me feel for Wart. like one thing you could say about arthur is he's got very he's very in tune with his emotions well and he's i feel like that's how i am like a lot of times i don't get ang- even when i'm angry i more so cry than I do like yell and I feel like Wart is similar to that like when he's very emotional he like gets teared up more than he does um shout but that's when Merlin quotes blow, my favorite. blow me to Bermuda I thought it was blast me to Bermuda but it is blow me to Bermuda yeah. and he turns into a rocket and flies off and they're like where'd he go Bermuda I guess what's Bermuda it's an island that hasn't been, been discovered, discovered yet, yet. <laughs> Uh, and it's kind of sad that he's just, he just leaves Wart kind of yeah, in he, the... Yeah, he... It's off for, like, the <laughs> the crux of, like, Wart's destiny. Yeah, like, but it, I guess you could also see it as he's taught him all he can teach him as maybe... That's not why he uh, left, though. That isn't why he left, <laughs> He no. didn't go, like, I've taught you I could do that's time true. for he summer vacation. He did just leave because he was angry, yeah. But it cuts to London in the tournament, and that's when we realize that Wart forgot Kay's sword in the inn, I think. Yeah. And so he runs back, and Archimedes is with him. Mm-hmm. And they run back to try to get the sword, and they realize everyone's at the tournament, so the inn is closed. And they see a sword in the snow, kind of in a courtyard. And, in an anvil. Yes, and Archimedes, I think he's the one who, like, points yeah. it out to him which is weird that archimedes doesn't know this legend either she's like just go get it <laughs> he like yeah. i feel like archimedes yeah. is also grumpy that like if merlin started to tell him he probably tuned out or like no nah, that's a very whatever. very it was just like yeah 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 whatever Cause, yeah yeah because uh, that's kind of how it starts with the two of them but i we all loved how when he touches it the lighting, like the light, the miracle, right? The light from the heavens and the There's music. A choir, the like, yeah. whole like, choir. You, well, it sounds like it's real. It starts off like ooh. It sounds like uh, the the Peanuts kids be singing uh, "Oh the Christmas." Christ- yes. Aww, <laughs> but yeah. it's it's not so much that he does it. That he does it, and he and it, and he notices it. He noticed like and he, he looks at the light. And he pulls his hand back. And he pulls his hand back, and it goes away, and it's. 
I don't think it's meant to be super. It's it is kind of to be like oh like like a little this, charming because he's a kid. But yeah. to me, it just cracks me up because I'd be like huh 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 like doing that with my hand. Yeah. Um, and, and so that by the oh, way, it, it, by the way, it doesn't you don't get the music or the lights when you touch the sword at Disney World. Yes. So, we'll, oh, we'll so it's not as magical. You, no. get, you get the people who they're going oh. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he pulls it out, really no problem. He actually doesn't even, like, at this point, doesn't roll up his sleeves or anything. He just, like, goes for it, pulls it, and it comes right, right out. And uh, he brings it back to Kay, and Kay's like, that's not my sword. And that's when the dad reads the inscription. He's like, this is the sword from the stone. And then everyone's realizing that somebody has pulled the sword out from the stone and nobody believes that Wart could have done it and they're telling him to prove it so they put it back into the stone. Yes. And so Kay tries to pull it out and can't and then everyone, there's like this crowd of people and you realize one of the voices, very famous voice. Thurl Ravenscroft, yes. one of the one of the greats from the show. Uh, we so, love us some Thurl. And he's behind Wart and he's like, I want to see the boy do it. And everybody is like saying they want the boy to do it. And this is when he kind of pushes his sleeves back and the lights and the music come back when he goes to Well, no, to no, no. It. First, wait. I, I, did I miss something? No, did I miss something? He Has Kay tried to pull yeah. it up? Okay, you said that. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, that's I'm sorry. okay. Um, so I was then he's, trying to pull something up. So oh, I missed then it. as he pulls it, they say he's ordained by heaven. And Can you start that over again? I was talking over oh. it. And you're breathing into your mic or something because it just sounds like a thunder. Or is that a it's thunderstorm? A, no, we're having a thunderstorm. Oh, oh wow. That's yeah, great. sorry. That was loud. That's why no, I, don't okay. know if you, I don't know if you saw my face just a minute ago when I went. But it was like a really big flash of lightning. So I was like. I thought, I thought you were <laughs> super into whatever Tara said. Yeah. Well, he I mean, I was saying he's getting ordained by heaven, so it is like a pretty big moment. But uh they say that this boy is our king and hail King Arthur, and that's when the father bows and Kay like I don't I think he's just like not wanting to bow or like doesn't really get why he should bow. I think do he does think? eventually, but I he think does. he's kind of ticked. Well, he's cuz he's pretty petty. Well, the dad says forgive me. Like, the dad actually yeah. apologizes like and says, forgive lot. me, boy. And then he tells Kay, you have to bow to your king. Yes. Um, And so then it cuts. I love when it cuts to the castle. And you see Arthur, now King Arthur, in his getup and everything. His getup is, like, all too big for him. Because it was made for, like, an adult king. And he's a boy. Yes. And so everything's too big. And he wants to run away. And he doesn't know how he's going to rule a country. And I love the bit of Archimedes, like, pointing out, well, let's try to go out this door and run away. And every door they open, it's everyone screaming, hail King Arthur. Like, everyone. Like, they're waiting for him. Yeah, as they're waiting for him to come out. And then he says he wishes Merlin was here. And Merlin comes back. And this is the outfit that Ryan wants to dress up as Merlin in his Hawaiian t-shirt when he comes back from Bermuda. And then that's kind of how it ends. Yeah. He, he shows up the last second. He's like, oh, you're going to be great. It's kind of. This is this is well, one thing I want to say before we get to that. K actor and Pelinor all were knights of the round table. Oh, cool. So, um, Pelinor becomes a king at some point of something. Oh, neat. So, um, I I like this movie. This is where your controversial opinion. I understand why it may have a lower rating than the other ones we've seen because the plot is just not. It's not a very solid start to finish plot. It's more of just an interesting, and it's interesting if it keeps your interest, but it's not like, I don't feel like Arthur grew a whole lot. He kind of realized what was there, but like, there, there didn't feel like a lot of growth in that character. Merlin like leaves during the important part, which is the sword of the stone. I feel like if they just took the sword and the stone part out and then like just called it Merlin, like it would, I would have enjoyed it more. Like I, sorry, I don't want to say I want to enjoy it more because I enjoyed it. I just think from a critical eye, I don't think the story was very solid. And they're remaking it. I'd like to see a little bit more of a Are focus they remaking on. it? I believe yeah. so. They started developing a new live action version in 2015 that was supposed to go to Disney Plus, but I don't know where what happened with development or where it is at that point, but that was announced that they were working on that project. I Interesting. I, I think that I now, I think there's a very good base there. 
that they can grow from. Like sometimes you see these movies, I'm like, why would they make like I, I would rather they I think make- they could interject more. I do think he grew with each story, but I, th- I I get your point of like overall we don't see a lot of growth in that character, and I feel like a live yeah. action version could maybe showcase that a little bit better. I, that movie didn't end with me going, he should be king. Like it really didn't. Like I was well, it was by accident that he became king. But that's his it's destiny. It's not accident. That's like, his that's destiny. That's what I'm saying. I understand, I'd like to see but a it kid... feels like it was by accident because he just picks the sword up, right? I, I know it's his destiny, but... I would like to see a kid that looks like he's... He looks like a fine. He's a fine character, but I don't. I, I don't see a. Ki- I don't see a lot of kingly attributes in him, and I don't see Merlin take him to a place where I felt like he should be king. And is that what I happens mean, in the? Is that what, what happens in the story though? Isn't the story like he's a boy king? I don't think he's a boy. I I don't know. Well, that's then that that story should change too. That's, I'm that's not trying di- to make it more that's, accurate. That's a different version. Again, there's so many different versions yeah. of it. If you yeah. watch the, if you watch the BBC series Merlin, uh, King Arthur is like this arrogant, spoiled, young, yeah. Interesting. like not anything like this version at all. And also, I mean, look at some of the kings that they had on Game of Thrones. Mm, very true <laughs> I, joffrey being the one that comes yeah. to mind as a boy king i i don't think arthur was bad in this if they're going to remake it i would like to see him grow got it in in the story this felt like he had a lot of potential and then it went you're gonna have i boy i hope he uses that potential because now he's king i would like to see him his trajectory into kingliness grow a bit before he gets the crown or him you know, I, maybe do something a little bit more than like save some get away from a fish and stuff. Like he didn't really like accomplish much before he did that, and that's fine. I think it's a fine movie, but I understand why it rates lower than other Disney movies. Did I enjoy it more than some of the movies we watched? Yeah, I definitely think so. But like, and I enjoyed it a lot, and I watched a lot growing up. But I think there's room for improvement there. Tara is giving me the most like whatever you well, say, I dude. Mean, I <laughs> understand your point of view, but I do think it can be argued. Yes, anything can I be think, argued. No, but I think yes, it can. We're doing it right now. All right, I'm gonna let Steph go. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I was just gonna say. I mean, but yes, like I, I laughed more in this movie than I did at a lot of the others. I enjoy it. I've always enjoyed it, but also it doesn't have like the following that a lot of other movies do. Yes, um, especially if you look at like the Disney theme parks. The thing that they have at Disney World is King Arthur's Carousel. There's not a carousel in this movie anywhere. So where the hell did that come from? He doesn't like, yeah. ride a horse. Yeah, there's there's yeah. nothing really. Um, and I think they could get creative with this. Kind of like when we were thinking about things with Pinocchio, like having like Geppetto's toy shop, right? Yeah. Like yeah. I think they could have, they could have like something where like it could be like training. You could do like something with the training. You could do um a restaurant that's a medieval feast that you yeah, eat with your hands yeah. there's just no horses there so it's not medieval times like yeah have, yeah so have owls more... flying around your head or something get merlin yeah. to walk around and do some close-up magic yeah <laughs> yeah that would be really cool have him as a walk around character do we want let's go into the questions we yeah, for sure this? uh how was the prince the princess i how let's go with how how is arthur yeah it's hard because there's not really a this one doesn't even have like a traditional love interest or anything like it's kind of him and merlin so yeah how was the princess how was arthur i liked arthur I you seemed like you had some issues with arthur i had some issues with his arc i thought he was fine stephanie what did you think i mean i think he was very naive um also i mean he, he it, it was like you were dealing with three different people that yeah the <laughs> voice is changing yeah i know it's something so weird it felt like the three different people. Because it was always you were the same voice it. for whoa wait wow whoa 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 yeah i mean it's i i love whoa. a good underdog story and i feel like this was an underdog story yes. yeah so yeah okay i'd agree with that um how was the prince to me the prince i guess is merlin merlin's fantastic i love merlin i love how curmudgeon and grumpy he is and i love how he's aloof when he keeps kind of forgetting his spells and i love the examples he gives of things that haven't existed yet like i like all those bits merlin is interesting to me because now a bunch of you are excited to hear this we i just got kingdom hearts and downloaded it and we'll see it oh merlin appear and i play a couple uh app games merlin tends to appear as like the guy who shows up and explains to you the rules of games oh that's like funny. he always seems to understand that he's in a 
video game. Like, and I think he works on his own, and that's why I want to see more a Merlin character doing close up magic because we all know how much I love close up magic. I mean, I do now that we've been to Vegas. I'm a huge <laughs> magic. Uh, uh, what did you think of Merlin? I, I mean, I think for me, Merlin is probably the reason why this is one of my my favorite movies and favorite stories. And I think he's really what draws me into a lot of the stories of Camelot and just mm-hmm. this storyline in general. I'm, you know, King Arthur, fine, whatever. But like Merlin <laughs> really, Merlin really does it. it. It's just great. And I, you know, I wish that, you know, someone would do like a spinoff so that there's a, a female Merlin. Like, I, Ooh, I think that yeah. would be cool. I would just love to see them do the same story, but it's like, oh yeah, Merlin's a woman. And I feel like it it's like Loki in the comics versus the Avengers. In the comics, he changes age and and gender and all this stuff all the time. I feel like Merlin's the same way. Like he's lived for a million years. He's seen he's seen far into he's the future from all. where we are, so he's like, uh, whatever. I'm telling um, you, you guys need to watch the BBC series Merlin because he I've he, watched he some changes of it. age throughout the series too. Like Oh, he, that's that's really cool. I watched some of it and I think it was at either your behest or, or Jen's behest. <laughs> Um, but yes, it, um, well, do not watch, uh, once upon a time for it because King Arthur's a bad guy for a while and it, <laughs> he goes insane for his quest for Excalibur. Okay. Um, how are the sidekicks? Ar- Archimedes is wonderful. Archimedes is so good. Again, he's an, he's a little bit of an extension of Merlin in the grumpiness, mm-hmm. but he's, he's very much his own at the same time. Uh, and I like that he does care for Arthur. He mm-hmm. truly like Jen, as we mentioned before, I really like Archimedes. Uh, what do you think, Stephanie? I mean, he's great. How can you not like Archimedes? I'm still fi- trying to find elusive merchandise of Archimedes. I agree with you that there should be a plush of him. That would be so easy to yeah. do. And I feel like people would buy it. Mm. Um, let's talk about music. What was your favorite musical number? Oh, man. It's always going to be a hard one for me. But I think it's going to be Mad- Madame Mim's song. But right. I do really like the, the, the spell songs. The, the dishes one and the packing up songs. I, I like both of those. But I, Madame Mim song for me. I used to think the Madame Mim song just because I love villain songs. But I like I think those, those spell songs are catchier in my opinion. They're, they're really good. Yeah. What do you think? I, I mean, I have to go with Mad Madame Mim. She's, she's my girl. So um, Let's talk about how it holds up. Uh, they're smoking. Yeah, it's Merlin with his pipe. It's it's very but, it, yeah, it's not featured ethnic representation. It's a European fairy tale, so it's all white people. Um, female character agency, I thought was okay. We talked about the female squirrel, and I think she was depicted well. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, there's not a really a there's lot not, of ladies. There's not a lot of ladies in it, but there also was not just like I mean, Madame Mother Mim, Princess. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's the two squirrels and the scullery maid and Madame Mim. And and Madame Mim, yeah. The yeah. unnamed character yeah. who works in the kitchen. Yeah. It's well, we never get. Agency. We also never get the name of the wolf. He's just like poor scrawny wolf. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> I think there could be some more characters to be added should they do something with it. I don't think necessarily giving Arthur a uh, love interest is. A I way liked to go. your idea of Guinevere being the squirrel. <laughs> Oh. I love it from the squirrel lady's perspective of like learning learning the people's world like Ariel. Yeah. Where she's just like, like and also they keep bringing her like welcome she... to this feast and she's just eating all the nuts like Arr. Yeah. You know who should play her is uh Kate Micucci, who is the if they did a live action, it's the woman who played the ukulele a lot in Scrubs. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> La- uh, one of the last things we want to do, and Steph, I don't think you're caught up on this, is we're gonna ra- we're gonna rank this villain. Mm-hmm. Before we do that, let's talk real quick on who do we think this has more than one villain, or do I contest that it has one villain and it's Madame Mim, and she just doesn't feature very much. I I agree with you, but I think there's an argument to be made that K could potentially. Do you want K on the list? No, I don't think okay. he's. Yeah, I th- I think Madame Mim is the clear villain. I think Kay is just a <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Kay has a lot of go away heat, which is why like I thought of him. Like yeah. I I don't care for Kay, but I I agree that I think it's solid K- Madame Mim. Kay is for the wrestling fans out there is the Baron Corbin of this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um so we will uh take a break real quick guys and I'll explain to Stephanie everything about our villains ranking. All right, guys, we're back. Stephanie is an expert, knows exactly what she's going to be doing, knows all her ranking, has it ready to go. All right, so let's start. The the indisputable, 
scientific villain ranking system. Mm-hmm. Tara, for Frightening, for Mad Madam Mim, what do you got? I'm going to give her a three. Uh, I don't think she's super frightening, but when she says that line, I'll destroy you, that is yes. very frightening. I went into it thinking I was going to rate her low and frightening, but then she did a few things like that where she was flat out like, I'm going to kill you. And the dragon part when she's like, she's, yeah. that's really intense. So, yeah, I think I'm so going to give her a I three. Agree. What do you think? Stephanie? Yeah, I was I was going to give her a three because it's, she's very like deceptive. You don't expect her to be that powerful. So definitely a three. Mm-hmm. Okay. Our next uh, section is funny. Oh, she's five. I gave her a five too. It's hilarious. Just, she might be my favorite, like the funniest character. Like, I think we maybe gave Cook a five. I don't and, remember, but she's definitely the funniest yeah, character. Yeah, and now though. comparing yes. comparing the two of them, I mean, they're a very different type of funny, but she, I almost think, is funnier than he is. Oh, absolutely. Now that I've yes. seen her after him. Five for yes. you, Steph? A hundred percent. She's a five. Uh, fierce. I don't think she's very fierce. I think she's fun, and I think she's got, but she doesn't have drag queen energy. She doesn't have cape drama. She's frumpy. She's frumpy. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I feel like in my heart, I should give her a one, but there's a part of me that wants to give her a two. I will give her a two based on the small time she turns into hot mim. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll give her a two because I don't want to shortchange her as a one, even though... I want her ranking to be high, which is not yes, how I should be playing this numbers game. but we got to not think about game. this and this. That's not how the uh, game is played. But I'm going to give her a two. Okay. Steph? I was also going to give her a two because I don't think she deserves a one, but... Uh, effective. Okay. So what do we think her plan was? I guess we have to discuss... Uh, her plan was to... Once de- she found out he was connected to Merlin, she wanted to destroy him. Yes. That ended very quickly because... And she almost, she almost did. She caught him. She caught him as a bird, and then Merlin bursts in. Uh, well, I also think defeating Merlin, she doesn't do either of these things, but she tries to defeat Merlin in the Wizards duel, and he ends up winning. But she is on top for most of it. Yes. Her I, battle of the wits is pretty, her wits are pretty strong. Merlin outsmarts her in the end. So but. what would you give her? Let's let Stephanie go first. She yeah. hasn't go first yet. Oh, of course. Throw me under the bus. Um, I, I was just going to say, I mean, her magic, She she's very good at magic, but she uses her powers for bad and not for good. So effectiveness, I almost want to give her a five because she's super effective at what she wants to do. It just so happens that Merlin happened to outsmart her that time. The, the category is a little bit more towards evil plans. So one of our highest has been Maleficent because she actually put Snow White to sleep. She actually put a spell. Sleeping Beauty. Uh, Yes, that one. Mm -hmm, (laughs) mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God. Um, Well, we don't really get a chance to see anything premeditated by Mim, really, though, other than the fact that she's like, I'm going to destroy you. So you want to give her a five? Oh, okay, four. Listen, no, don't no, be bullied don't, because don't, this I'm not trying with to bully you. If you I want to change it to four, you can change it to four. But, I, but I'm now going to ask you clear your mind. What does your heart tell you? I want to say five, just because okay. I say five. Go with it is. It. Also, she's not she's not present throughout the whole movie like a lot of other villains are. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give her four. Okay. Um, but I agree with Steph that I feel like there's a lot of potential of what she could be doing in the world, right? Like. I feel like she's but the. Ki- I don't think we should do this off of like what she could do because that's speculative. Okay, I do think though she's because very- she's just sitting on her. <laughs> Sorry, she's just sitting around playing. She's just sitting around solitaire. playing solitaire, so she's probably not out terrorizing people. Yes. Um. Oh. Uh. Well, I'm gonna give her. F- I'm still gonna stick with a four okay. because I think her magic was really strong, and I think it says a lot that she went up against Merlin. Okay, I'm giving I'm her. Get- a f- I'm. I'm gonna need a Mad Madam Mim spinoff of her own show just so just that we can see mim what, yeah and it's not like mim plays solitaire like i want to see what mim does with her life uh i gave her a three that may i get it uh design start with tara so are we talking about the design of her like because this you could go into just what her normal oh looks like or the design of all of her characters so i'm, I'm giving her, her five. a five on oh, yes. design because yes. because of it, all the things she yes. changes into and how it still looks like her Look, when she's she got changes that, into that them. mop of hair yeah it's great I, she's I, okay. a shapeshifter totally yes yeah she really is okay so that's her five. and merlin both that's fives because, across the board yeah go away heat one with me one i love her i get really excited for her same okay I'm going to give her a five on Yes Factor because she's one that I remembered from a kid. She's one of those ones that I feel like 
she's got a little bit of like 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 a like a cult status because I wouldn't say she's necessarily known for to everybody. So I get excited when I hear when someone else know. Yeah, it, when yeah. someone else knows about Mad Madam. Yeah, Madam. I believe mm-hmm. I said yes when she came on the screen. Yeah. So she gets a five for me. Same stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. All right, guys. We are gonna count these up, and we will be right back. All right, guys. Where where do you guys think she ranks? I think she's towards the top. Okay. She's got to be kind of high up there. She's pretty great. She is sixth. Okay. I'm good with that. Under the Headless Horseman, but above Lady Tremaine. Oh, interesting. She Yeah, she beats out Lady Tremaine. Because of her humor, I think she beats out Lady, Lady Tremaine, Tremaine, Queen of Hearts, and Chernabog, and then everybody else. Interesting. I'm really excited as this list continues to grow to see where everybody falls. Well, we've had some really good ones. Like the last three we've done have been Maleficent, Cruella, and Mad Men. I know, we've had some really good Very, very high. Uh, Stephanie, thank you so much for being... Oh, no, no, I always almost forget this question. I think it's pretty obvious for all of us. Do we finally give it the platinum edition it deserves and put it up on our shelf, or do we lock it away in the vault forever? 100% up on the shelf. I, give it give it to me on the shelf and give me some <laughs> merchandise, please. Yeah, I'm with you. I would like some merchandise. Oh and I want a platinum a platinum edition version of this. Yeah. It deserves it. Stephanie, thank you for being with us tonight. We really appreciate it. Um, thank you for being flexible. We've rescheduled a couple times. <laughs> no, uh, totally. Do you, we usually let our guests, I, I always say we usually let our guests like, but this time we're not. Um, no, uh, our guests, we give them time to plug anything they want. It can be a personal project. It can be just something you've been enjoying. It can be. It can be be kinder to one another. Well, don't whatever t- you want. It could be whatever. It could be be meaner to one each I'm other. I'm just giving really you an want. example. I'm not saying that that's what she has to pick. But anything you want to plug? Oh man, I mean, you know, I mean, if you guys have known me for a long time, but one of my most favorite things to do uh, is share on social media. I'm always looking for, I'm, I'm, I'm always looking for the helpers, uh, like Mister Rogers would say, and that has absolutely nothing to do with with Disney or the Sword in the Stone. But uh, I'm hoping that by doing this awesome podcast, and I hope that you guys keep it up for a long time because you got a lot more stuff to cover. Uh, that it will it will help people, uh, you know, get through this awesome time that we're all having at home with each other or, you know, if those of us who actually have to be out in the workforce right now. Um, so look for the helpers. I love it. <laughs> Great. Uh, thank you so much, Stephanie. Uh, and next week, guys, we are back with our first live action. Yay, Mary Poppins. We'll be watching Mary Poppins. So excited. So it's see another you guys favorite. for that. Thanks for listening to Tara and Ryan's Princess Diaries. If you want to tell us your favorite Disney villain and why it's guest on, send us an email at trprincessdiaries at gmail.com. Or you can send a tweet about how great Maleficent is to at TRP Diaries. Check out our Facebook group by searching for Tara and Ryan's Princess Diaries. Tara and Ryan's Princess Diaries are available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Overcast, and many more. Wherever you hear us, please be our knight in shining armor and give us a five-star review. Thanks again, and until next time, remember to always live happily ever after.